Hi guys, my name is Emily, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the second book in the King Killer Chronicles. It seems my experience with series, specifically trilogies recently, has been that the second book falls short and is unnecessary. And as I'm reading it, I'm very aware that the second book is unnecessary. Whereas, with this, the second book, everything is purposeful. Everything feels purposeful and it feels important. One of the flaws that I often find with sequels or middle books in trilogies is that it's a lot of setup and the setup feels very setup-y. It feels very clunky and obvious and I just want to get to the good part the, where the setup pays off. In this book you can obviously tell there's some setup. A lot of his adventures have him going someplace and learning a thing and going someplace and learning another thing and going another place and learning another thing and so like there are these little like bit adventures where he learns something where the main character quoth learns something each time and i really enjoyed each of those moments like obviously i can recognize that those are set up for things later on at least i'm pretty sure that those are things for set up later on like i can see that each place where he learns something has changed him as a person and is going to come into play at some point in his life later. My point being that I think that the setup was still done in a very entertaining way. I didn't feel like I was reading kind of monotonous setup and that the good stuff will come in the third book. I still enjoyed everything that I was reading. One of the things that I really liked about the first book was that the story involved a lot of storytelling. What I find with a lot of fantasy books is the background information you have to dig for it, like it exists outside of the story. You have to read other works by the author or interviews or something to build the world entirely. Whereas this series, Rothfuss has managed to include world building through storytelling and through songs. And that continues on in the second book. And again, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel unnatural. It feels normal. It feels like it should be. And so I'm learning about all of these things about the world and the world's history through storytelling and I like that. I like that everything I need is contained in this book. I don't have to go to outside sources. That is another thing I really appreciate about the series and about Rothfuss's writing is that for a fantasy it is pretty accessible in my opinion. Another thing that I really like about this book is that despite its size, it is a very quick read. The writing is very engaging, it's very fast paced, and I found myself just sitting there totally engrossed in the story and a couple of hours later like have a very satisfying amount of the book done. It's a very rewarding read in that you can visually see what you're accomplishing quite easily. I haven't said much about the plot, you will have noticed, because I wanted to keep this spoiler free. Briefly, in terms of plot, this is the second installment in Quoth's story. Quoth is a fast-talking, um, ballsy kind of person that is always speaking his mind and always getting himself into trouble. He is very smart, very talented, and this talent for trouble is what causes him to go on these adventures outside of the university. I won't say how that comes about, but Quoth does end up outside of the university for a significant portion of this book in other lands, meeting other people, doing other things than just learning at the university. And I really enjoyed the adventure aspect of this too. He seems much more confident outside of the university than he does inside the university, if that's even possible, because Quoth is pretty damn confident all of the time. Here's the part now, if you want to read the book and you don't want to be spoiled, you should close the video. Thank you for watching because I would like to discuss or throw out some questions for discussion in the comments about what happened in this book and where you think it's going. So if you don't want to be spoiled, bye! And for everybody else, I wonder what the hell happened to Quoth that made him become, I'm pronouncing it Cote, um, the innkeeper. What changed? What made it so that confident cocky Quoth became this subdued, depressed innkeeper? The prologue and epilogue in this book are called The Silence of Three Parts, and they both end with the line like, this is the silence of a man that's waiting to die. What turned Quoth 
from this rambunctious, full of life human being into a human being that is waiting to die. That is one thing that I am super interested in. And so my prediction is that in the third book, we'll see how Quoth ended up the innkeeper. We'll see Bast motivate Quoth to deal with the real and the now. Um, so all this weird war stuff that's going on, Bast will motivate him to kind of take on the Quoth, the legendary Quoth role again. And that things will work out well for the country, but not for Quoth. I can't see this book having a 100% happy ending, but my prediction is that Quoth will go back to Falurian like he promised. He's just this character that's larger than life anyways. He almost doesn't fit in with humans. That is my prediction for how the series will end. What are your thoughts? How do you feel this is going in terms of what will happen? Do you see a happy ending for Quoth? I would love to discuss your theories on this series and the ending of the series in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!